How do you do, fellow kids? In today's video, we will be making our own paint software. It will look something like this. So what's going on here? We have a canvas and a few settings. We will be using the canvas to draw on with our mouse. We will also have four inputs, a color picker, a stroke size picker, an erase button, and a delete button. This can be the start for many of you to get into algorithms and all sorts of good things. For example, you could explore how to perform an undo function or how to fill any shape. So if you want more content like this and want to support my channel, be sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video. Only 41.1% of you are actually sub to me. Let's try to get that number as close to 100% as possible. Moving on, let's break down this project before we get into the coding. Looking at what we want to perform, let's make a list of things we will need. Firstly, we want a place where we can draw stuff. So we need a canvas. We also need two inputs and two buttons. In JavaScript, we need to think of what all we need to do. The first thing would be to initialize the canvas. Next, we need a mouse variable to store mouse data. We also need to perform an erase and delete function on the canvas. So those will be two different functions. We will probably need some event listeners to keep track of the mouse states as well. We need to look at where the mouse is and if the mouse button is up or down. We need to draw only if the mouse is down. That gives us something to work with. Getting to the programming. Open up VS Code. We will need three files, an index.html, an index.js, and an index.css. In your HTML file, type exclamation and press enter to generate the boilerplate code. This is Emmet. It's a way to make the coding process faster. The equation you see right now defines the entire HTML structure we will be needing. The body will have two containers, an app and a script tag. The app will have a controls div and a project div. In the controls, we want a div with a title and an input two times. We will also need two buttons. The project will have a canvas with its ID set to canvas. The script tag will have a source attribute. I will make a short video on Emmet later. But if you type this out and press enter, it will generate all the HTML we need. And if you didn't type it out, you should probably pause the video and copy my code. Before we do anything though, we need to add some data into the HTML. The first title will be color, and the input type needs to be color as well. Since we need this in the JavaScript, let's give it an ID of color. The next title will be for the size. Change the input type to number as well. We need to specify a min and max value for the user to choose between. We also need to give it a default value. Let's give it an ID of radius as well. Next come the two buttons. The first will be to erase and the second will be to delete. Let's add an event listener to both of them. We want to erase parts of the canvas if we click the erase button. So we will make an erase function. We want to erase the whole canvas if we click the delete button. And that will be its own function as well. Make the script tag's source attribute point to your JavaScript file. Add a link tag into your head. If you set its href to the CSS file, you will be able to use the CSS from that file in your HTML. We're done with the HTML and feel free to upgrade the code as you want by the way. Coming to CSS, make the body's margin zero and set the font family to absolutely anything but the default. The app will occupy the entire screen, and we want the display to be flex, align items to center, and flex direction to column. We basically want everything inside the app to be at the vertical center and in a row. The controls come next. I want it to have a width of 100% and a height of 10bh. We have three divs directly inside controls. So let's divide the controls into three equal parts by setting grid template columns to 1fr, 1fr, and 1fr. If you save this, you will see that everything went to the top of the page and got distributed equally. Now let's give the controls a background color of something dark. You should use whatever you want for these sort of values. My job is to show you how to make the project. You should experiment and make your own things and not just blindly copy everything I do. We want the three divs inside controls to stretch as much as they can. So let's set their width and height to 100%. Also, all of them have something inside. We need to justify content to space evenly and align items to center. Let's come to titles. Just set the font size to 2 rem, that should be good. The buttons come next. Set the font size to 1.5 rem, with an height to 100%, and we want the cursor to become a pointer whenever it's over the button. We also need to center the things inside the button. Now let's add a hover property to the button as well. 
All you need to do in here is to change the background color a little bit. That is all for the controls. The next thing we will CSS is the project class. So set its width and height to 100% and center the stuff inside. Let's also set the background color to something slightly darker. The canvas is simple. The background color should be white and you can make it pop out by giving it a box shadow. I'm editing the input as well. The default doesn't really look good. Set the font size to 2 rem, darken the background color and remove the outline and borders. You can also set text align to center and the color to something brighter. With that, we are done with CSS. JavaScript is where most our action will actually happen. So let's get on with it. In your index.js file, start by calling the canvas element. I'm storing it in a variable called canvas. We need to set the width and height proportional to the window's size. So set them to window.inner width divided by 2 and inner height divided by 2. You need to remember that our page has an origin, where x and y are both 0, but our canvas has its own origin as well. If we were to plug in our page's x and y values into the canvas, it won't work the way we want it to. So to avoid that, we need the canvas's boundaries. You can get that by setting a variable to canvas.getBoundingClientRect. If you log this out to your console, you will see the values of the rectangle we call the canvas. We are interested in the top and left values. More on that later. Let's hand the context over to a variable named c by typing variable c equals canvas.getContext 2d. I also want to store the canvas's width and height in simpler variables. This is all the setup we need for the canvas. Coming to controls, let's call and store the inputs from our HTML. Make a variable called color and set it to document.getElementById color. Next, make a variable called radius and set it to document.getElementById radius. We will be needing a way to store the mouse data, so make a mouse object. Set its x and y values to 0 and down to false. We want the down to be true only when the mouse is pressed. Make an array called stroke as well. I'll explain why we need it a little later. Coming to functions, we will be using three functions to do stuff. The first one is draw. In here, begin and close path. We need to set the fill style to color.value. This will check what color we chose from the input and apply it to our brush. We basically need to draw a circle whenever the mouse is pressed. So draw an arc with its x and y set to the mouse's x and y, set the radius to radius.value, and to be extra sure, type math.abs in brackets number in brackets radius dot value. This will assure that the radius is never negative and that it's a number. We also need to call the fill function below the arc. If you call the draw function, you will be able to see a black circle at the edge of your canvas. That's exactly what we should be expecting since the mouse's x and y are set to zero. Let's make the erase function. All we need to do in here is set the color's value to white. So type color dot value equals hash ff FF, FF. This is hex for white. And this is the accepted format for the color element. The first two positions are for red, and the next are for green, and the next are for blue. FF in decimal is 255. The next function is erase whole. This is also simple. All you need to do is use the clear rect function and pass in 0, 0,0, xlim and ylim in there. Before we try these functions out, let's add an event listener to listen for mouse movement. Type add event listener mouse move. Pass e into the function. In this function, we need to set the mouse's x and y values. So type mouse.x equals e.clientx minus bound.left. This will give you the relative position of your mouse and you should do the same for mouse.y but use client y and bound.top. If you also call the draw function in here, we will be able to draw stuff onto the canvas. If you click the delete button, the canvas gets cleared. This is what we want it to do. Let me draw something again. Now, if you click the erase button, it should be able to erase stuff as well. That is perfection. Our proof of concept is ready. Now we need to make it so that we can only draw if the mouse is pressed. So make an if statement to check if the mouse down is true and call the draw function in here. So the next step would be to add the mouse down event listener. In the function, all you need to do is to set the mouse down to true. Add a mouse up event listener as well and in here set the mouse down to false. 
Now you should only be able to draw if the mouse is clicked. This behaves a lot more like the paint softwares we are used to. But an issue that you might have noticed is that it's drawing circles and not strokes. That's because the mouse is moving too fast, and that causes a gap to form between two readings. And our next goal should be to tackle that problem. This is where we will use our galaxy brain and come up with an idea. My solution to this problem is to record each point in a stroke and join them with a line. And that is why the stroke array was made. So firstly, every time there is a valid mouse down, we want to add the mouse's x and y positions into the stroke array. Do that by writing stroke.push and in here make an object with its x set to mouse.x and y set to mouse.y. Every time the mouse is lifted, I want the stroke to be complete. So in your mouse up event, make a for loop that goes from 0 to stroke.length minus 1. In here, begin and close path. We want to set the stroke style to color.value and line width to 2 times the radius value. We need to call the move to function in here and pass in stroke at i.x and stroke at i.y. And below here, we need to call the line to function and pass in stroke at i plus 1.x and stroke at i plus 1.y. And don't forget the c.stroke function. After the for loop is done running, we need to set the stroke back to an empty array since we don't need these values anymore. If you draw anything, it will be filled automatically. And with that, I will end this video. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. We are so close to 100 subs and my greed will only be quenched when we reach 10 million. So share this to anyone you think will benefit from my video.